Making me start over, Paul. Sorry. <laughs> That's how this Friday is going to be. I will tell you, Paul, there was a, a, a struggle going on, and I think it's gonna, I'm going gonna, gonna, it's gonna to come to a head today. It is currently 66 degrees in this household. Uh, yes. The high temperature today is 54. I don't feel like the house is going to warm up enough to where I can... Yeah. So you don't have electric heat like I do. No, I've got a giant gas thing. Expensive. Yeah. So I'll tell you, the problem with this kind of thing for us is in this seasonal transition, it's actually two problems. One is there's a temperature control in every single room. Yeah, that's right. There are at least four different units. They all have different interfaces, um, and they're all a pain in the ass. And so we had a couple of really um, warm days, and we had turned the heat on after a couple of really cold days. And you step into air. It's not even rooms. It's like areas. There's a little hallway off of the bathroom between two rooms. That's wicked hot, <laughs> you know. Or you step into a room where the heat had been on, and now it's hot outside, and it's just wicked hot, you know. It's like being in the ocean when you find that warm spot. Mm-hmm. And then you realize it's urine, and you're yeah, like, and oh. you're, like mm, mm. <laughs> you're like, I don't care. I just want to stay. Here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just, I don't, just don't want to be cold. I don't care. It's diluted. <laughs> God. Um, yeah, so it hasn't been on yet. I mean, it, it's not an expense thing. It's more of like the morale of like, you know, you gotta, oh yeah, of course, yeah. Like, right. I've always I, look. I, I can't do this here, but I've always felt like what you should be able to do is set the temperature, and it should be fine all year long. And that's not the case. No, it's not. Like if if you decided sixty five was perfect for you, it should always be perfect. And it, but it's not. It's, it's not. It, and yeah, it's not because in the in the winter time we it, it makes no sense for whatever winter time the heat will be set to like seventy degrees overnight or something like that. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. perfectly fine. But in the summertime, if the AC is set to seventy degrees, I won't sleep. Like I like it, yeah. I like it frosty the snowman in the house, and well, it, and then you have to introduce the other variable because I'm assuming your wife is the same as mine in this capacity. Not that they like the exact same temperature, but that whatever temperature they do like is completely different from the mm-hmm. temperature that you or I might like. Well, dual zone climate control was absolutely invented by a couple who was on a road <laughs> trip, and somebody said, yes. "How right. do we?" They, what they need is a dual zone comfort control or whatever you call it, <laughs> climate yeah. control in a in a bed. I'm sure you know, they, they the left like side of the bed is going to be 60 and the right side is going to be 70. Individualized, like heated blankets, I guess, maybe is whatever. Well, I, this morning is very, actually a typical example. Not Well, I don't usually get up first, but I happen to today. I got out of bed and I looked at the bed. And my wife is on the you know her side and there is a giant comforter over her only on like her side of the bed. It's like a mound of <laughs> warmth, you know, and like I was just sleeping under two like really thin you know, a thin blanket, a thin sheet or whatever, but mm-hmm. it's just, I don't know. What are you going to do? Well, welcome to uh, Friday's Tech Podcast, everybody. <laughs> uh, Intel was doing all right. There's more interesting things, actually, than Intel's earnings. So some, uh, is it Alder, Alder Lake CPUs? Mm-hmm. Actually, one has been purchased uh, by an individual who, at a retail store, is on Reddit, was able to buy oh. an i9 chip, like, what is it, the 12900? I think they're okay. going to call it. Uh, the problem is right now, though, uh, there's no motherboards to put it in. Yeah, like yeah, what? Yeah, like you need you well, need that, the other half. <laughs> the other problem with these chips uh, is going to be, and this raises actually a really big issue, but uh, there's going to be backward compatibility issues. Like older games, especially, probably won't run on these chips. And um, go on. You know, there's this kind of weird. Uh, there, uh, there's um, I don't know what to call this. Groups of communities online of people are trying to preserve the past digitally. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, emulators play a big role in this, like, you know, Amigas disappear or TN994As or mm-hmm. whatever, you know, computer systems. And there's like these software libraries that were delivered in whatever disk based format at the time or what are cartridges or whatever. And they're trying to, you know, convert, move things forward. It's it's like as we move from like vinyl to CD to streaming or whatever, it's like, you know, things get lost and there are people out there trying to, um, you know, preserve that stuff. And so, you know, PC games uh, have already already fall into this bucket for sure i mean they're classic games from the past um you know which is what i think part of what makes what microsoft is doing with xbox so great um not that we have 100 percent backward compatibility but we do have a really good it's better than zero i mean it's yeah it's, it's pretty darn good yep yep so, so anyways yeah i'll be curious to see how that i don't want to build a new pc but i kind of want to build a new pc um 
So 12th gen, um, if this is following the typical pattern, what we're going to see is a, a real small smattering of desktop PCs this Christmas or holiday season. Mm. And then the 11th gen, what we used to call U-series, will probably debut at CBS. CBS. It's amazing I can speak at all. At CES in January, which, by the way, have gotten multiple requests from people, companies, that like, hey, are you going to CES? Hmm. The answer is no, by the way. But but that there's a there's an in-person component happening this year, um, mm -hmm. this coming year. So, yeah, anyway, I guess the, I, what I was trying to say, though, is uh, 11th gen is still the the new, like all the new U series stuff you're going to see this holiday is yeah. 11th gen. Yeah. So, I don't know. I'll be curious to see what this actually does because there's a lot of, Intel's got a lot of hype around this and and Pat, their yeah. CEO over there, sounds pretty confident. What's the, um, no, this won't be true of the desktop parts, I bet, but we're also moving to these smaller nanometer processes. Mm -hmm. uh, does 12th gen, they, does that move the needle on that at all for Intel? I know this has been a... Oh, I, can't I think it I think it does because it's an entirely nanometers. new process, right? They're doing like the big little core thing. So. Yeah, it's even more complicated than that. We need a new we need new terminology for this because even um, I don't think Alder Lake is more complicated than that. But uh, if you paid attention to the uh, Google Tensor stuff, mm -hmm. it's not it's like big, medium, little, and there's mm -hmm. uh, and the medium cores are what used to be in the previous ARM generation, the big cores, and now they are, you know, they're able to really fine tune what processes occur across which cores in a really fine gray matter. If I'm saying that right, but um, it's getting really complicated. It's getting like uh, power PC complicated, mm. one might say. Um, that's kind of interesting. So I have a, a proposal here, Paul. So there's mm -hmm. a lot of chips out there, right, that can run on Windows. You've got like the, the ARM chips, you've got your classic x86 chips, you've got it, and then whatever this Alder Lake thing is. Frankenstein, Alder Lake things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we need, we need like a term to like group all this stuff together. My, my okay. suggestion is universal Windows processor, since UWP is no longer being used anymore. I think it's perfect. Like, this is seamless transition for Microsoft. It's beautiful. You know how I feel about UWP, Brad. Um... I'm just saying my genius <laughs> has no bounds. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say something like Windows Silicon or something. Uh, nope. As a... Okay. Well, I guess that wouldn't be fair to the Linux folks. What, what, what do we call this? Non-Apple silicon? Uh... Yeah. Because there's rumors out there floating around, too, of Microsoft and AMD working together on an actual like native ARM chip. And so... Right. Because, right. of course, those are the guys you go to for ARM. Uh... They have a good relationship. With, I, 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 yeah. well, I, if I could talk, well, too. I mean, it is Friday, and I've already probably been drinking. Um <laughs> I have not, but you think about it, AMD's future potentially could pivot also on being able to build out robust ARM chips. If they, if, you know, it's a big right. if, if they can get there. And so There's two things, well, they need to, first of all, ARM, literal ARM chips, absolutely. But also what Intel is doing, which is ARM style, big little architecture for yep. lack of a better term uh, in their own chips. I mean, they, Intel is kind of forcing their hand on that one, right? I mean, software of the future software of today windows 11 i don't know if that is optimized for this exactly but it certainly has been designed with this in mind uh and will be optimized for it in the future i mean that's going to be one of the big dividing lines where at some point some version of windows will run way better on this type of architecture and if you happen to have an 11th gen whatever uh you're going to see a you know this will be another upgrade cycle for people mm -hmm. um so amd has to be part of the, oh i guess you know technically no, they do I mean, have their own architecture with many, many cores. They do that Threadripper stuff, and yeah, I mean, I guess technically, I, I guess Microsoft must just optimize it for uh, each of the chipsets. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's an interesting. It makes you wonder if yeah. Microsoft went to Intel and says, "Hey, can you? We're exploring this. Give us a proposal." And they might have just come back and said, "Look, we're doing all this big little stuff." And Microsoft said, Look, okay, we're not going to touch that. You guys go down that route. And if it works out, great. We're going to hedge our bets. We're going to go over to Team Red. We're going to build this out. And hopefully one of them, uh, right. you know, works out. I don't know. The, the story with Windows and ARM is always next year, you know. Oh, next year, everything's going to be great. Oh, and Windows 11, it's going to be great with Windows 11. The Dodo well, update, okay. the Nodo, or what was it, Nodo or whatever. <laughs> it's yeah, yeah, the, the Do Donut thing. Yeah. No. Yeah, we'll get there. Maybe anyway, next year. It'll be next year. Speaking of getting there, you're going to get there. To, are you going to Paris tomorrow? 
Yeah, it's tomorrow night, so we don't technically arrive until Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm not really not looking forward to an overnight flight. But you're um, gonna say you were looking forward to Paris, and I was gonna call the paramedics and be like, eh, "Something's wrong." With <laughs> no, I didn't buy be... a new Mac. He said he didn't want to go to Paris. Something's wrong. A million years ago, I worked for this little company in San Francisco, and I was living in Phoenix at the time. But I used to go there all the time. Google. And we, what's that called? Google. Google. No, it was, a, it was a, no, it was a, like a five person, really small company, and. um my uh, the owner of the company and I and uh, my friend our coworker Joe we all went to New York City for some event I don't remember what it was and the the owner boss whatever Adam was uh, so excited to be in New York again for the first time in ten years we stepped off out of a subway and he literally he just ran down the street screaming like waving his arms <laughs> like he was so excited to be there again and Joe and I just kind of looked at each other like what the hell is going on here but um yeah that's going to be me in Paris so yeah I can't wait. I love it. Paris is my favorite place on earth. It's going to be like you and the sound of music, but instead of out in the field, you're just under the Eiffel Tower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Rue is alive with the sound of Griswold. It's going to be the... But your wife will be back in the hotel because you don't let her out, apparently, according to the comments. Yeah, that's right. Oh, speaking of which, <laughs> I'm going to read you a question. I mentioned uh, we were laughing before we started because mm-hmm. I was reading Brad a question I got from a reader, but... Um, or something um it was really actually we weren't laughing at that we were it, was, it doesn't matter um <laughs> <laughs> let me let me read we, we were literally were not making fun of a reader question we were laughing about oh. something related to yep. the topic but so someone asked me this question this is uh this is interesting uh and this is going to be an ask paul today uh is the increased coverage of stardock applications the result of brad joining the firm windows 11 increasing the need for them or a bit of both right so Hmm. I'll just tell you my off-the-cuff answer, mm-hmm. uh, and then you can you can corroborate it. I guess um, it has nothing to do with. Well, no, actually, let me step back. First of all, I don't think that I have increased the coverage of <laughs> Starduck. I don't even know what that means. Starduck has regularly contacted me with whatever they're releasing, and I routinely write about whatever that is for the most part. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, especially the big things. You know, start eight, uh, start eight, start ten, start eleven. Yep. I mean, I've always cut that stuff. So I, I, I actually I could go look, I guess, but I don't really think I have increased my coverage of Stardock stuff. Um, but regarding you and I and, and you working at Stardock, you really don't go out of your way to reach out to me about anything nope. about Stardock. Like, you're not like, hey, you know, I, I know this might be a little weird, but you mind writing about this or whatever? Like, you never do that. Like, um, there's mm-hmm. there's nothing, right? I mean, that's... No, I mean, that's... I, I try to keep it... I mean, so there's also people need to understand that the owner of Stardock, whose name is Brad, I know we've mentioned this before, is a, yep. a longtime friend of both of us. Like, yes. we've known him for at least oh 15 I, years for me. I interviewed him on the phone from my first house in Denham, so it would have been before 2001. So sometime yep. between 1999 and 2000, that, one of those years. That's when I met him <laughs> So on the phone. I mean, we talked. And him and I hit it off immediately because he was an OS2 guy. Mm-hmm. And we went down this rabbit hole about software development in OS2. And uh, he had a – I can't remember. He, he, his claim to fame back then was uh, like a space game, which you may know the title of. I, I'm sorry. I can't remember it. But it was, it was a big deal. Mm-hmm. And I think it was like one of the only native OS2 games ever made. <laughs> and it was certainly the biggest. Um, and someone will in the comments tell me what the name of that thing is. Star something. I don't know. Anyway, but – yeah, he's a great guy. So, but I'm on the PR list for Stardock. Like I, I have been for many, many years. So, I get official reaches, reach mm-hmm. outs, um, from whoever does your PR. Um, yeah, it's probably from so, Christy. Probably is where it comes from. Yeah. So, um, it's, no, it's nothing. Nope. You know, I mean, and, the other. By the way, okay, I was gonna say the other side of it too is like how this whole job came about is June 25th or whatever Windows 11 was announced. Brad right. Wardell reached out to me like the first week of July, somewhere around that timeline, and said, "Look, all of our applications are designed for Windows 10. They run on Windows 10. Here comes Windows 11. We have to refresh the entire catalog." And so it's just a an, a convenient timing. So you see things, Paul or I mention it. It's because Windows 11 came out, and now we're in the the brunt of trying to take every single app and make right. it work and run on Windows 11 because. Just because it ran on Windows 10, I can assure you, does not mean it runs on Windows 11, especially for the stuff that we do. <laughs> Contrary to Microsoft's. Well, you guys yeah. do a lot of shell uh, related yes. stuff. Yes, yep. And that, that stuff's changed. So uh, uh, just two more comments real quick about Startup, because I this I think this is an interesting topic. Um, you know, when I recommend stuff, whether it's like an app pick on um, Windows Weekly or whatever, it's either because literally, A, I use it, or B, it's it's a high-quality something-something from a company that I, you know, trust or whatever. Mm-hmm. 
And that's always been the case with Stardock. And so you can go back over the many years and the various things I've recommended from Stardock to fix Windows 8, to fix Windows 10, to fix Windows 11, whatever. Um, part of the value of that stuff is these things are inexpensive. You know, like um, Start 11 is four ninety nine. Yep. It's like a no-brainer. Like if this thing impacts you every single day and this other thing that costs $5 fixes it, I said this uh, Wednesday on Windows Weekly, that's the cost of a cup of coffee at Starbucks. I mean, why would... It's one time. Too. It's not a subscription. Yeah. It's not a... It's a... Blah, blah. There it is. So. Yeah. So that's, you know... Uh, that's that's the thing for me, and, and I um oh the other and the other half of sorry the other thing I wanted to mention was, re- with regards to Windows Eleven I, I, for better or worse I think it says a lot about Windows Eleven, that there are so many, utilities already available to fix Windows Eleven, mm-hmm. and yes I think it might be a little bit of an insight into my take on Windows Eleven although I love it and use it every day, that I have uh I I sometimes I put the stuff in the forums or I'll put them in the um, in that Throt Now thing like there'll be some little utility that brings back the classic menu when you right click on the desktop or, mm-hmm. you know, blah, 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 whatever. Like I'll mention that stuff because I know it's a concern to people who come to the site and yeah, I'm in a weird place personally because I'm writing a book about Windows 11. I have to cover Windows 11. Like yep. I, my daily use thing, I kind of have to keep it stock because I need to know what Microsoft is actually doing. Um, but I, but this is clearly a big deal. I I think it's, this is, almost reaching Windows 8 level of concern, and in this case from the power user community, not from mm-hmm. normal users so much. Although, actually, you'd know that better than I, I guess. But um, that the things need to be fixed, you know. And um, the one conversation Brad and I did have at some point was, I think we had it privately, but <laughs> I don't know, who knows. But we had talked about uh, all the things that Start 11 fixes and what if Microsoft fixes that stuff over time. And I, my argument is, I hope they do, but honestly... There'll always be a role for that and for other startup products and other companies' products. And people who use Windows 11 now still need that. And so even if you said, look, it's going to be $4.99, but a year from now you won't need it anymore, it's still a great value. Mm-hmm. You know? That's, well, so anyway, there's, a, a there's a lot of things ahead. in the Microsoft community that work in this way. For example, the entire MSP community that sells Office 365, Microsoft 365 stuff Effectively, right. what they do is they take a look at the solution. They'll resell it, but you look at Avpoint as an example. What they do is they try to either plug in or just sort of smooth over the experience. That is exactly the way I look at what we do. It's like micro- Windows 11 is right. fine, but we sell mm-hmm. and we create apps and tools that kind of just smooth over the experience, much like an Avpoint or a Veeam does in the back of world. Uh, it, no, it's a, it's a real yeah. world problem. I mean, <clears throat> people have muscle memory. Yeah. And oh, if yeah. we, we always use the right click on the taskbar and do task man, but there are probably a million versions of that for different, everyone has a different one, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, when you move, when you upgrade to something and then that thing that you do all the time isn't there anymore, it's like uh, you completely lose focus and ha- scramble to try to figure out what's going on. And then maybe you can adapt, maybe you can't, you know, I don't know. Maybe you can figure it out, maybe you can't. I don't know. It depends. But yeah, I mean, bringing stuff back that people want is, is, just common sense. One of the other interesting things too is I actually had this conversation with an unnamed Microsoft uh, employee is that the Microsoft community doesn't have a robust app development ecosystem like Mac OS or right. iOS or even Android for that matter. And so the conversation with them was at yeah. one point it's like when there are app developers who are trying to do different things, and I don't just mean Stardock, but they try to engage to make sure yeah. that they are having, um, you know, the tools and accessibility that they need because they know they need to nurture that community, especially uh, for pure Windows development apps. So, yeah, that's that's fine. I mean, this is a bigger topic than probably what we want to get into, but mm-hmm. I mean, I think part of Apple's success with desktop app development today is tied to their mobile success because they've sure. created a system where um, developers can bring that stuff back and forth and, and it's easier to target the Mac if you're already doing an iOS or an iPad app or, or you can tailor that app to run now on Mac OS. So that's something Microsoft lost out on. I, I feel like desktop development on Windows kind of lost the script a long time ago for a variety of reasons and not all self-inflicted on Microsoft's part. You know, mm-hmm. the move to the web and there's all kinds of reasons, but there, there isn't a lot of brand new app development occurring on Windows for sure. Yeah, uh, not and typically, if you care about this stuff, 
Yeah, it's not where a lot of people like. If you're going to build a mail client, yeah, why would what, you, yeah, I'm going to make a native Windows mail client now? Who would do that? Yeah, maybe Microsoft, mm -hmm. right? But you know what? I bet when that next one comes, I bet it's not a native Windows anything. I bet it, although they'll call it that, it will be like some web based something something. It's going to be. Uh, well, like Teams. I, Teams mm -hmm. Actually, Teams is a great example. I mean, Teams has an app that runs on Linux, runs on the Mac, and runs on Windows. Those aren't, well, I don't know about the Mac one, actually. But, you know, I wouldn't call that a native app exactly, but Microsoft would because they've mm -hmm. embraced all developer paradigms, right? It's, it's was React native probably before, and it's moving to, or it was Electron or... No, it wasn't Electron. What was it? I don't know. It's moving between things, but yeah. it's web -based. The point is it's web-based. Anyways, you're moving to Paris next week. The podcast will only be, I think, one day next week because Paul's oh, going to be yes. eating fromage and other yeah, things. Yeah, so probably Thursday, right? And yeah, I think I, so. I fly. I don't. I, I'd have to go look at the schedule. I, I fly. I don't think Friday. Is that the schedule? I don't know what the time differences are. Yeah, it's going to be too well. No, there's no way because it's just too. There's the six hour time difference. So mm -hmm. if it made any sense from like you'd have to do it at six o'clock in the morning at the very latest <laughs> for it to even make sense. So we'll, uh, we'll say Thursday. Well, we'll see you then. Alrighty. <laughs>